Hello everyone and welcome to this series of videos on the Garry Kasparov against Deep Blue matches of 1996 and 1997. Um, the idea for a, a series of videos about these matches um, was suggested by a subscriber so thanks very much indeed. I thought it was a great idea when um, when he suggested it and uh, well I've just become a bit obsessed with these matches so uh, um, yeah thanks very much indeed it's been a, a lovely couple of months of work on this and uh, well very much looking forward to uh, to sharing it with you. Going to start with the uh, 1996 match um, take the um, uh, yeah take the uh, the games one by one um, and also have a, a couple of extra videos about um, yeah specific points of, uh, of Deep Blue's play that I think will be uh, will be interesting so um, yeah the focus of course is to you know go through all the games with modern engines that's uh, Stockfish, Leela and uh, Dragon 3.3 and uh, find a lot of new insights and uh, really in this very pivotal moment in uh, in chess history in engine history you know and, uh, and just try and look at it with a, a bit of a modern perspective you know the perspective of knowing that engines are way stronger than humans it's a little bit uh, different to uh, how people were looking at it uh, at the time and uh, as well as uh, doing all this uh, engine analysis i'm going to be drawing on a lot of um, yeah contemporary and also historical sources um, we've got um, a great book uh, behind deep blue by uh, feng shung shu um, who was the um, um, i guess the, the the real father of uh, of deep blue very interesting book published in uh, about 2002 and uh, a lot of inside information on to what the deep blue team was doing um, in a similar vein there's uh, two very nice scientific papers by murray campbell who was uh, yeah also there pretty much from the start uh, creating deep blue and uh, one just generally about deep blue and another uh, scientific paper about um, the extended opening book which really was a key factor in Deep Blue's success and uh, well very interesting article and we're going to be looking a lot at that during the uh, the 1997 match especially. Um, we've also got Gary's perspective um, perspective with um, a little bit of uh, time to think about it somehow so uh, that's in his book Deep Thinking which was published in 2017 I think um, so that's as always with stuff from Gary always very interesting a lot of chess insights and uh, typically him as well so um, yeah definitely worth um, uh, having a look at and uh, and seeing what he says uh, uh, during the match um, and then for the 1997 match a really nice thing we've got Deep Blue's logs uh, from the game so um, yeah um, uh, Feng Shung Shu he wrote in uh, behind deep blue that those um logs were um yeah on the deep blue website about the match well that website is is long gone but um well the internet way back machine uh, provided uh, a nice little solution and uh, i managed to find the logs um they've been looked at before uh, actually in around um in a series of articles by uh, by albert silver on um, on chess base but i think uh, what i'm doing here it's probably the most uh, intensive uh, examination of deep blue's logs that there's been so far so that was really really interesting on top of that there's some other interesting sources there was um, a bbc sounds reunion uh, hosted by Kirsty Kirsty Walk and uh, it brought together Joe Benjamin, Murray Campbell, Malcolm Payne, Maurice Ashley, Frederick Friedel so uh, a lot of people who were involved in the match and they discussed it, it was a very interesting uh, conversation. Um, there's also a, a, a film called Game Over 2004 which features Gary uh, very heavily it's a bit of an odd film I have to say but uh, yeah quite interesting you know some uh, lots of uh, contemporary film and uh, well you, could, you know as well as the descriptions that you can read in uh, in Gary's book and uh, and uh, behind deep blue um, yeah you also see it uh, live somehow so uh, yeah very very interesting and there's some contemporary annotations uh, especially for the 1997 matches uh, Yasser Serwan and Inside Chess I remembered it as being very interesting and that's definitely true uh, Daniel King uh, wrote uh, an interesting book on the uh, on the match with uh, an interview with Gary uh, after game four which was particularly interesting and uh, he also did um, a series of videos on power play uh, as well his power play channel and that was uh, yeah as always with Daniel you know good stuff and um, yeah John Nunn also annotated the games for chess base from the 1997 match and uh, yeah whatever John does is great quality so um, yeah very interesting as well 
So I'm really trying to bring together all those sources and then give a modern perspective. Yeah, from my perspective, you know, having, uh, you know, 20, uh, 25 years later um, and also from the modern engine perspective uh, as well. Um, just have to say, you know, that, um, of course, I was a professional in uh, in 1996 and 1997. And, um, you know, yeah, in some ways I look back and really see a, a missed opportunity there because, you know, I followed the games, of course, and the drama. Um, I remember the games perfectly yeah, when I went through them. But um, somehow I never really made the extra step of really analysing Deep Blue's games. And um was trying to think, you know, why wasn't that? Because after all, you know, that would seem to be quite a... Um, an interesting thing to do but I guess the point was was that you know at a cursory glance Deep Blue's play didn't seem um, that remarkable it was very strong you know but uh, yeah you know there were many players in the world's top 10 who were also very strong and you know also looked in the same sort of strength area and uh, yeah you know I, I guess you know it was running on hardware that to me at the time seemed you know beyond anything I would ever see in my life um, you know, and uh, I think it just felt somehow a little bit far away, something that was going to be outside my experience. But uh, yeah, looking back, you sort of uh, you sort of think, ah, would have maybe have been a good idea to um, to get uh, a bit uh, involved a bit deeper in that. And uh, and of course, you know, when you start looking at the games, you realise there's an awful lot of things that Deep Blue did that really, uh, you know, were 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 sort of heralding what's what, what's happened now with uh, with engines, you know, and uh, um, Deep Blue was. Uh, was far from perfect obviously much much weaker than uh, than the uh, than the modern engines but still there was a lot of quality in its play and um, yeah you just have to look a little bit deeper than just uh, you know a cursory opinion to uh, to see it so that's very interesting to bring out as uh, as well so that's the uh, the general introduction uh, just have a, a, a quick introduction to um, to the 1996 match I've taken a few little notes so um, just uh, forgive me if I look down from uh, from time to time. So um, yeah, uh, so this is t really taken from uh, Feng Shuang Shu's book uh, Behind Deep Blue, um, and um, yeah, the negotiations with Gary for the match started in late 1994, and the match was uh, took place in February 1996, um, and that was supposed to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the uh, of the ACM uh, Association for Computer Machinery, which was a big yeah, also very big in in engine, engine chess. And, um, yeah, you know, you would have thought, really, that if you're starting, you know, late 1994 to negotiate and the match is in February 96, that you'd have huge amounts of time to prepare a great machine. But, uh, yeah, well, anyone who's involved in IT projects, they know that that's <laughs> never the case. And, um, yeah, I mean, um, um, yeah, Feng Shun Shu de de describes a really, um, a really harrowing time to get uh, Deep Blue ready. He had a car accident himself. There were many manufacturing problems. And, uh, of course, what, what he was doing was building a very specific chess chip. I mean, it seems weird in, in, in our days when, uh, you know, we've just got a general purpose laptop and we run Stockfish on it and it's unbelievably strong. But, uh, yeah, in those days, yeah, you know, you ne really needed a specific chess chip to, um, to actually stand any chance of, uh, of doing anything against, uh, against Gary. And, um, yeah, you know, it was only in December 1995 that they got their first batch of OK chips. And that's about when Joel Benjamin, American Grandmaster, was brought in um, uh, to the team as, um, as, the, as the match second to, uh, yeah, to work on the opening book and also hopefully, you know, give uh, Deep Blue some, uh, some extra insights. And, um, yeah, it was only two weeks before the match that they finally got all the chips that they, uh, that they needed and all, not all of them that they wanted only 216 instead of 576 so yeah you know it was uh, a pretty tough time I mean you can imagine that um, uh, it's always the same isn't it you know the hardware guys come late and then probably the software guys had to uh, scramble like anything to you know to make anything of it and um, yeah was uh, was really by the time the match started it's pretty clear that uh, the deep blue guys were were truly nervous that um, that maybe it just even wouldn't work at all you know so uh, that's a little bit the backdrop to uh, to the match um, I mean, the, the amazing thing about uh, uh, the Deep Blue chess chip, and I still find it hard, you know, I've got a career in IT now, but to really get my head around this idea was that, um, yeah, a lot of the evaluations were computed directly on the chip. So really in hardware, there were a huge number of positional factors that, uh, you know, the Deep Blue could notice in hardware directly. 
um, and then uh, compute them. And um, uh, that just meant that Deep Blue was way faster than, uh, than anything else because, uh, yeah, all the other chess programs were, were using software to, uh, to do that, whereas Deep Blue would do it in hardware first of all. But, of course, there's advantages and disadvantages to that. I mean, it's incredibly fast. But, of course, if you programmed it wrong in hardware, then, um, yeah, well, very, very hard to change. I mean, it's just locked in, really, uh, sort of hard-coded. Um, the Deep Blue guys had a sort of a solution for that, but I don't think that was ever really implemented. That was just a, an idea that they'd had. Um, and then, yeah, in software, you know, what you're really uh, doing is, um, um, well, maybe working around some mistakes, but also assigning weights to, uh, to the evaluation factors, just saying, OK, you know, this is more important, that's less important, and that's going to help you, you know, decide the move. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I suppose, you know, one of the most, uh, yeah, shocking things, but not shocking, really, if you've done IT projects again, is, uh, you know, that how much on was happening on the fly, really, you know, and um, it's, uh, yeah, really quite remarkable, you know, that, uh, that, you know, fairly major changes, you feel, you know, to evaluation or whatever, um, yeah, were being made on the basis of, uh, of one game, simply, against Gary, and then something was changed, you know, it's... Uh, um, I mean, the, the Stockfish guys nowadays, you know, if, if you tell them, oh, uh, Stockfish did something bad in that game, you need to look at it. You know, they're always saying, no, 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 you know, one game, well, we don't look at that at all. You know, it's, um, it's uh, we, we look at things over over thousands, millions of games, really, you know, that's, uh, but uh, here, you know, it was just, uh, you know, one bad game with Gary, a bad evaluation and stuff was being tweaked. Really, uh, yeah, really, really amazing, you know, and uh, really, uh, really, uh, well, very risky, you would have thought as well. So um, there were um, 216 chess chips and each could cert search 1.6 million positions per second. So um, maximum of Deep Blue theoretically was 300 million positions per second uh, in that first match. Uh, although the highest that was observed was 100 million. Um, obviously, you know, you're running these chess chips on multiple um, uh, computers. So, yeah, it's a parallel search. You need to coordinate them all. And there was quite a lot of uh, overhead involved in that. Um, um, yeah, Feng Chung Chu says that, um, yeah, I mean, basically, you know, uh, um, if they'd had more time, they could have made everything a lot more efficient. But, um, yeah, no hope. So uh, you just they just had to go with what they had. So there we are. I mean, uh, I found that fascinating. I can definitely recommend, uh, you know, all the books that I've mentioned there. And but this uh, Behind Deep Blue in particular, you know, because uh, I think it's a really fantastic book and really revealing, really interesting. Um, so, yeah, definitely uh, take a look at that. But OK, hope that's, uh, that hasn't been boring. Just the introduction to the match. Uh, yeah, I've looked at it so much now. I find it really fascinating, the whole background. And uh, well, we're going to take a look at game one of the match. Deep Blue White against Gary Kasparov, Philadelphia, 1996.